Greetings, everyone. This is April from Android Authority. In this episode, I'm going to compare two of today's popular Android phones: the Sony Xperia T, known as the Bond phone, and the LG Nexus 4, known as the Google phone. Both are Android, yet each one offers a user experience that may or may not click with you. As to which one is right for you, hold off your decision until the end of this comparison. These two phones are very portable and pocketable. They're not exactly small enough to be held firmly inside a loose fist, but they're small enough to be held firmly in one hand. The first thing I noticed about these two phones is the simplicity and minimalism of their front panels. There are no physical buttons or switches on the front, not even capacitive buttons. All navigation control is done through on-screen buttons. Consistent with the aesthetics of the previous Nexuses, the Nexus 4 keeps the plain and simple design of its front. No logo, no word mark. Unlike in the Xperia T, which has the Sony and Xperia logos up front and in silver, don't get me wrong, I find both designs pleasant and easy on the eyes. Abandoning the curved screen design of the two previous Google phones, the Nexus 4 has an all-flat surface for its front. The Xperia T's front is also flat, with edges beveling towards its frame and sides. Viewed from the sides, the Xperia T screen looks raised from its chassis. Between the two, I find the location of the Nexus 4's ports and buttons much friendlier. The headphone jack is at the top side of both phones. It's a great location for users like me who frequently use headphones to listen to music while keeping the phone inside the pocket. On the left side of the Nexus 4 are its volume rocker and SIM tray, while that on the Xperia T is its micro USB port. At the bottom side of the Xperia T is only the hole for the phone mic. On the Nexus 4, there's the micro USB port in between two screws, which I find truly a distraction to the Nexus 4's beautiful sides. On the right side of the Nexus 4 is just the power button, but on the Xperia T, there are ports and several buttons here: compartment for micro SD and micro SIM cards, power button, volume rocker, and dedicated shutter button. It's a busy side. Yet the most disappointing thing about this is that on the Xperia T, the buttons are located along the lower half of its side. I find it inconvenient since I'm a right-handed person, and this part of my hand presses on the buttons. I find them hard to reach with my thumb too, though with left-handed use they're easily accessible. But the disappointed story takes a different course when the phone is used in landscape mode, especially with the intention of using the camera. These buttons then become conveniently and accessibly located. Let's now check the back side of these phones and see what charms they hold. First of all, these back panels are non-removable, so there's no way that users can replace the back plates or the batteries. As far as design is concerned, the words of the day are twinkle and sparkle. The Xperia T soft touch rubber back is bespeckled with glitter dust. These are not visible from afar, but on closer view, you can see them. The Nexus 4, in contrast, is more glamorous with its use of twinkle and sparkle. Underneath this thin layer of scratch-proof glass are crystal designs that twinkle and sparkle when viewed from certain angles. These two logos also appear to float in the air when viewed from an angle. I personally find such design unnecessary, but glamorous and interesting, nevertheless. Like its front, the back of the Nexus 4 is flat. I find the curved back of the Xperia T much better because it makes the phone feel like it's hugging my hand when I hold it. These phones have crisp, high-definition displays and snappy touchscreens. The Nexus 4 uses a 4.7-inch True HD IPS Plus screen, while the Xperia T uses a 4.55-inch TFT screen. Colors are bright and vibrant on the Xperia T, especially with its use of Sony Mobile Bravia Engine technology. I find the more realistic, slightly subdued, and more natural color on the Nexus 4 more pleasing to my eyes. Powering these phones are Qualcomm chipsets, quad-core Snapdragon APQ8064 with 1.5 gigahertz Quad CPU on the Nexus 4, and dual-core Snapdragon MSM8260 with 1.5 gigahertz Quad CPU on the Xperia T. It's easy to figure out which phone offers a smoother experience. The Nexus 4, of course, wins the day in the processing power arena. The Xperia T lags and stutters a bit when scrolling home screens and web pages, launching apps, or loading HD photos. HD games, however, run smoothly on both phones, even on the Xperia T. The Nexus 4 owes its smooth performance to its powerful hardware and Android 4.2 Jelly Bean. It's pure and unadulterated Google Android. 
The Xperia T, meanwhile, is still on Android 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich with a Sony Timescape user interface. Sony is reportedly releasing Jelly Bean for it sometime next year. For photo and video capture, the camera differences are rather huge. On the Nexus 4, you get a measly 8 megapixels compared to 13 megapixels on the Xperia T, which also uses a Sony Exmor R sensor. Both cameras are snappy and responsive to say the least. In bright environments, the Xperia T produces vivid and vibrant photos, while the Nexus 4 outputs more realistic and subdued colors. In low light conditions, the Xperia T is capable of brighter and less noisy images. Both phones can record 1080p Full HD videos, but you'll need to have stable hands, or else your video will turn out shaky. The Xperia T claims to have image stabilization, but in my experience, it certainly is lacking or doesn't work well, if at all. Media playback, though, is quite a joy on these two phones. Both can play Full HD videos without as much as pausing for breath. Sound quality on both phones is okay, too. Plus, you can adjust the sound levels through equalizer presets, a multi-band equalizer, and other sound enhancement filters and effects. Just avoid placing the Nexus 4 in its back when playing sound because the audio tends to get muffled. Amidst all the power-eating activities that can be done on these two phones, the Nexus 4 seems to offer better battery life with its 2100 mAh lithium polymer battery with 15 hours of talk time on 3G. The Xperia T has an 1850 mAh lithium-ion battery with 7 hours of talk time on 3G. Lastly, storage. If you're going to keep a lot of photo, video, and music files on your phone, stay clear of the Nexus 4 and its 8 or 16 GB internal storage. It doesn't have microSD storage expansion either. The Xperia T offers better options for storage with 16 GB of inbuilt storage, plus the microSD card slot for up to 32 GB more storage. In sum, I'm all for the Nexus 4, especially if I'm more concerned about processing power than about storage. It doesn't have a 13 megapixel camera like the Xperia T does, but for casual and occasional photography or video capture, 8 megapixels is actually more than enough for me. The Google phone is also first in line for Android upgrades, plus it gives me longer battery life than the Xperia T does. And as a bonus, I got a really fancy and pretty phone back with sparkling crystals and floating logos. Which of these two phones do you like best and why? Leave a comment and let us know. Get more Android news and reviews from AndroidAuthority.com and from our YouTube channel. This is April from Android Authority. Thank you for watching, and may the light side of the Android Force be with you.